and welcome to the Biddy Tarot Podcast. I have a very, very special guest today, and it is none other than Kate Northrup. Hello, Kate. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I am wonderful, and it's just an absolute joy and pleasure to be chatting with you today. Um, now, if you don't know Kate, I'm going to just share a little bit of background about Kate, and then we're going to jump into um, your uh, your story, and we're going to just have a really yummy conversation around things like money and um, tarot and everything in between. So uh, if you don't know Kate already, number one, what are you doing? Uh, but number two, um, Kate is an entrepreneur, best-selling author and mother, and she supports ambitious people to light up the world without burning themselves out. So Kate teaches how to heal your relationship with money, time and work just think about this as a you know professional tarot reader or an intuitive healer how important this is um kate's also the author of the bestsellers money a love story and do less and also the creator of the do less planner the host of the top ranking podcast plenty and her work has been featured by the new york times oprah daily today show glamour harvard business review and so much more and uh you live with your husband and who is also your business partner um, <clears throat> and also your two daughters in Miami. And I got to say, you know, I, I remember reading Money, A Love Story probably many, many years ago and just feeling like, oh, you know, something really clicked in for me with that book. But even more so, I think the book of Do Less. And I remember reading that and just, you know, like when you read something that aligns so much, it almost feels like a a massage of the soul. You're like, oh, finally, I feel seen. I feel heard. And I feel like there's a way forward. And I just really want to um, it's, it, have that opportunity to thank you for creating such a book, but also creating really like a movement towards um, being able to do less and embracing our feminine flow. So wow, amazing work. So awesome. Yeah, it's, it's fun because that book came out in 2019. And then since then, um, a lot of leaders in the space, like in the digital marketing space and all around have come out with like more messaging around that or their own take or, you know, whatever. And so it's, it's been fun to see the way that that message, I'm not saying I, I initiated the entire thing, but to be on the earlier end of the wave and to see how the wave has continued to grow. And I just love it. Yeah. And in fact, I just saw something recently in one of the groups I'm in, uh, you know how we've got the concept of like girl bossing. Now there's something called girl mossing. <laughs> yes, I love the girl moss. I'm so into it. I'm I must so be a bit behind. On so many levels. Yes. <laughs> yes. So amazing. And you know, it's um I think also like for us at Biddy Tower, look, I don't to be honest, I don't know that we're in a do exact do less mode. We're in a very busy mode right now with launch preparation. Um, but we've certainly embraced like the whole concept of feminine leadership and feminine flow and, um, really tapping into more of this, like the cycles within work. So I think the more that we start to embrace this kind of divine feminine energy in all areas of our lives, you know, the more powerful it can be. Um, but I kind of want to go back to the beginning. What, what is it that inspired you to do this work in the first place? Well, you know, <laughs> I definitely ended up being an author and teacher in this way, like by accident. I, um, I had my own journey of getting into a lot of debt and just being really financially unconscious. And then I wasn't resonating with the personal finance advice I was learning. Um, I just felt like it was shame-based. It was guilt-based. It's just, I'm a very spiritual person. It just really didn't resonate. I just felt like I was being shamed all the time by the financial experts. So I just came up with my own curriculum that kind of pulled from a lot of different fields of study. Um, you know, Mama Gina's School of Womanly Arts and Pleasure and, um, and Spirituality and Energetics and my yoga teacher training and so many different, and I was like, I am going to heal my relationship with money, but I'm not going to do it from a place of like discipline or, you know, chain blame, whatever. And it really worked. And I started blogging about that, about what was inspiring me, just about different personal development topics. And 
through that, I was then invited to be part of this little think tank thing um, that Hay House was doing at the time for the next generation of thought leaders or authors or whatever. And um, through that, I got invited to do have a, a, my first book published because I was teaching these workshops all around the country called Women in Wealth. And then between that and the platform that I had created with the blog and the kind of traction I was getting with the, my writing, um, it just so that that's how that happened. And then I was like, well, I guess I'm an author now. And then um, over time, I really transitioned. I started off in the direct selling industry, selling vitamins. So it was, you know, that's what I did for my business. And over time, very gradually, I shifted. Um, so that's not what I do anymore, obviously. But but I did both in parallel for many years. And, um, and I'm a big believer in multiple streams of income. So then... Then after Money Love Story came out, I was like, oh, okay, well, I just like write books about my personal journey and they seem to really help people. Um, and so that's when my second book came out and then I'm working on my third as well. Oh, fantastic. Can I ask, what is the third one about? Mm -hmm. The third one is about um, women and the nervous system and money and God. Oh, fantastic. What a wonderful or combination. source, if you yeah. don't like the word God. Yeah. Yeah, so intriguing. I think that's what I really admire about your work too, is it is so, it feels like it is so from the heart, as in what is so relevant and real for you in that moment, what you have learned and mastered and, and how can you share that with other, well, probably mostly women, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really powerful. Um, I'm also curious about uh, how you might be using tarot in both your personal life and your business life, because as I shared earlier, um, you know, I think I read somewhere that you were inspired by the Empress card in your business. So tell me what, what role does tarot play for you uh, in, in both areas of your life? Mm -hmm. So I have been reading tarot since I was 12. I, my mom's best friend um, when I was growing up was an into a medical intuitive and she taught me how to read tarot. And so I've used it for decision making, for getting more clarity around relationships, situations um, for decades. So I just think that when we can get out of our like logical, you know, trying to fix everything with our minds place, we can really access our creativity and in, uh, intuition in a much bigger way. And um so I, that's one of the reasons I love tarot. And for me, when I was developing my body of work that was, that Do Less is based on, I was teaching this free workshop and in it, I said the word, I, I wanted to talk about becoming a master of your energy, but master felt like really like a masculine word. So I ended up saying instead, becoming an energy empress. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it just like, it just came out. And then in my, uh, in a previous version of my business, we had this membership called origin, which was for women entrepreneurs who wanted to uh, make more while doing less. And in that membership, we called our members empresses based on that me saying becoming an energy empress, which is another way of saying like, really being in tune with your energy and managing your energy as opposed to your time, which is the unlock for ultimate productivity and creativity is managing your energy instead of your time. And uh, then after that, I like revisited the Empress, the, the Empress card in tarot uh, because I got pushback from someone around the word Empress and the indications sort of, of, of colonialism with like an empire and the shadow sides of power that we've, you know, we've seen through whatever, you know, thousands and thousands of years of history. But I was like, yeah, I'm going back to tarot on this. And so when I read, when I reread about the Empress card, you know, all over the internet and in my books, I was just like, oh yeah, like divine feminine energy, Taurus vibes, Aphrodite, yummy receivership of the earth, but also divine feminine, 
all about re receiving in a relaxed way. And so the Empress is kind of like my archetype of what I want women to feel like when they implement what I teach. I want them to really become their inner Empress. Yeah. And what a powerful way to use it as an archetype, not only really for your own journey and guidance, but also for your community and, and how you channel and express your work. Um, and this is really what I love so much about tarot is it's not just about pulling cards and doing tarot readings and telling the future. Uh, it's so much more than that, isn't it? And it really can come alive in such big ways when we find you know, more of an integration into our everyday life. Yeah. And one of the things that I really have been loving lately, um, you know, I don't, I don't even work with tarot. I wouldn't even say I work with tarot weekly. Like it's, it's infrequent at this time, like maybe like five to six times a year. Although right now on my desk, I do have the star card because I hosted a Thanksgiving dinner um, that was themed based on the star card because it just felt really right to celebrate the calm after the storm for my family and the other families gathering. Um, so I do like to be inspired by different and uh, my Easter brunch that I'm hosting is themed for the Ace of Wands, which in the uh, Mother Peace tarot deck that I use, Wands is not, is in, isn't in traditional tarot, there's like, it's not Wands, isn't it a different, or is it Wands? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get confused because I learned tarot just on this one deck and you know, the mother piece deck by Vicki Noble. Do you know it? It's circular. I know of it, but I'm not really okay. familiar with each circular card. And like, she uses different words than others. So sometimes I'm like, am I saying that right? <laughs> so, but the, the ace of wands in her deck is this, um, it's like this burst of fiery energy and it's like a little naked baby coming out of a coming out of an egg and like the egg is like cracked open and I was like this is this is our card for Easter brunch this is about like like rebirth on steroids so um I like to use tarot as like an archetypal theme for a party or for a season of my life or for a launch I'll often in my business like pull a card um like I'll kind of connect with the soul of the launch and I'll ask what is the energy that I can best embody during this launch. And then also just kind of like, what's the energy of the launch for our team. And so tarot can be really helpful with that. And then I also really love the way that expect that um, it speaks to cycles and cyclicality because, you know, when I pull the world card versus when I pull the chariot and like, it helps me to understand where I am in an evolution in a particular curriculum in my life. Um, and so I like that too. Yeah, that's amazing. You're actually giving me some ideas. So. <laughs> Thank you. <Awesome. laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so yeah, I, I just, I think it's, it is so powerful when it is used in that way. And, you know, even I'm just thinking like, having it as a theme for a party, what's really neat, or even having it as a theme for anything, is that you can almost like, you can look at the picture, and you consciously go, yeah, that's the right fit. Yep. Yep. But then as you start to play with it a little bit more, maybe you start to think, okay, well, what colors am I going to have? Or what am I going to put on the table? You start to like unpack these layers to it that might've been sitting in your subconscious, but now they're kind of brought into the conscious space that um, then just add a certain kind of magic like i'm envisioning your easter brunch is probably just going to be absolutely magical on levels that you can't even anticipate at this point uh because you're tapping into tarot so that's yeah that's really amazing so it does actually sound like you're using tarot a little bit more than just you know five times a year. i'm like wait I'm, I'm probably fairly aware of it and you know just energetically but yeah, yeah. i'm not doing like readings that frequently yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how often would you say <clears throat> you're doing a reading for yourself? You know, you ever... I haven't done like a full spread in years, but I've, I definitely like several times a year, I'll pull out the cards and use them to make a decision. Yeah. So I'll, yeah. I'll have my little like folded up yes and no's and yeah. um, I'll flip cards on the yeses and no's and then kind of nail things down. Yeah. Love it. Fantastic. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about money. Um, 
because for our you know for our community there are many people who are in the intuitive healing space they're reading tarot um and one of the biggest blocks i would say to this space is the whole thing of you know you can't charge for your spiritual gifts who are you to charge and it's you know i i can really feel into a lot of the shame that can come up um and feeling bad or guilty of trying to charge for these services. Um, also what often happens with our community is like, well, you know, Mary down the road, she's only charging $50 for a reading. How could I possibly charge 300? Um, people just don't have enough money these days. So I am really curious to tap into your beautiful mind and just hear of any insights or advice that you would have for our community around seeing money in a different way, creating a new relationship with money in a way that honors our, you know, spiritual connection, um, but also honors that we are in kind of in this kind of world, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it is important just to say upfront that money is pretend. Um, it's a system that we all sort of have to participate in and we all collectively agree you know, kind of like Instagram, right? Like Instagram is a, is a platform. And if everyone left, it wouldn't have any value anymore. That is how the economy is. Like we are all just doing it because we're all doing it, but it's this collective unconscious contract that we're just going to participate in this system that is pretend. So let's just start there. And so money is a stand in for what we value. Money is a stand-in for value that we can provide in the world and value that we would like to exchange. And we earn money in exchange for value that we have provided for, for a transformation or for something that someone has experienced or physically is purchasing um, that is something they desire or that solves a problem that they have. So value, some, something being valuable is completely subjective. There is no baseline for any of it because our values are based on our deep personal imprints and they're very emotional. And anybody who tries to tell you that like business is business, just take the emotions out of it. It's not, nothing is when it comes to money. It's so emotional. And so we really need to learn our emotional landscapes. And a piece that I've been bringing in um, over the last couple of years that I didn't know about when I wrote Money, A Love Story, my first book, is that our emotional landscape is mitigated by our nervous system. So our emotions do not just come out of anywhere. They are based on, yes, what's happening in our lives, but also very much impacted by our history and specifically the history that lives in our bodies and the history that we personally experience, plus the history that our ancestors experienced, plus uh, collective nervous system encoding from witnessing what has happened to other people we identify with. Our nervous system does not know the difference between something happening that was traumatic to somebody that we watch on the media, and if that person is somebody we identify with, and that thing happening to ourselves. Mm. Our nervous systems do not believe the lie of separation. They know that we are all absolutely connected and they feel what happens to other people and it leaves an impression. And so what we need to understand fundamentally is that our nervous systems are creating our emotions and our emotions are creating our thoughts. So when we have a thought like, oh, how could I charge? $50, you know, $300, the lady down the street is only charging 50 or people don't have enough money. I shouldn't charge them. Or I, this is a spiritual gift. It just comes to me. How could I possibly charge? All of those thoughts are from an emotion, which is from something in your lived history or something in an ancestor's history that is then causing that thought. Your nervous system registers anything that is unfamiliar as unsafe and it will create an emotional landscape and then thoughts to keep you from expanding beyond the familiar so if you come from a lineage 
of people where scarcity was their experience or from a lineage where people were persecuted for standing out or having wealth or doing well or being a spiritual woman, which we all have that history living in our DNA, the witch wound, that is real. Your body is scared. And so your body then tells your emotions to do something, which then tells your thoughts to tell you to not charge. And essentially your nervous system is like, great, that'll keep her under the radar so no one kills her. So I just want to like paint that larger context picture so you can understand why when people say, oh, you just need to work on your mindset, they are missing a huge piece of the puzzle and it is a vast oversimplification that we really need to stop doing. We cannot think our way out of something that our bodies feel or something that our bodies experienced or that they have the memory of even if they didn't personally experience it. So what do we do? Well, the way to expand our nervous system thermostat around money or around anything is to learn how to signal safety. So we have a range of resonance or a range of capacity, and that's our ability to stay uh, basically present and awake and relaxed in response to, or at least at, at choice, in response to what life brings us, in response to both the positive and the negative stressors of life. When we are triggered, we will go into a sympathetic nervous system response. So we'll go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And those responses are sympathetic. We are now outside our range of resonance or our range of capacity. So the name of the game is to be able to identify when you are dysregulated, meaning you are out of your parasympathetic response and you are in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Now, when you're having limiting thoughts around charging, for example, it can be a very low grade level. Like let's say one of my, one of my responses is I go into judgment. So judgment of self or others is a low grade fight response. People pleasing mm -hmm. is a fawn response. Um, going into hyperactivity is a flight response response. Going into overwhelm and not being able to take action is going into a freeze response. So understanding like, oh, limiting thoughts are just my body feels scared. <laughs> That's it. Like, that, like, don't even engage with the thoughts. The thoughts are going to be, you're going to have thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And they're mostly going to be negative. And at the end of the day, if you follow them long enough, they're just going to tell you that you suck. So don't pay much attention to your thoughts. That's just like, but instead, no, oh, when I'm having thoughts that are making me feel bad, it's because you felt bad to begin with and the thoughts are just backing it up. And so the name of the game is to do something that will signal safety in your nervous system so you can expand your range of capacity. So if you have the opportunity to increase your rates, for example, and let's say you've been charging $50 for a couple of years and you're like, it's time to raise it to 100 also, I'm like, I need to be able to pay for my own life as a spiritual provider, right? You are not helping anybody by financially struggling. For sure, no one is helped in their life if you are financially stressed out. That helps nobody. And the idea that it does is based on the illusion of the lie of scarcity which says that there's not enough to go around. Mm -hmm. Here's what's true. We know from the data from Buckminster Fuller and a really incredible book called uh, The Sum of Us by Heather McGee, there are enough resources on planet Earth for everyone to live a really good life. And value or wealth is created. If I have an old car in the garage and I spend the summer fixing it up, and I go sell it, I can sell it for more than I bought it for. I literally created value. 
if I write a book, that didn't cost, like, I'm not taking, and then I sell it. I'm not taking money from anyone. I created that value. I created money. It only adds. It's not like the money that I bought, got for my book advance, like took from someone else. It's, it, it does not compute. So there's plenty and your having money does not take away from anyone else having money. In fact, because of the fact that we are all completely connected and, and uh, separation is a lie, when you prosper as a tarot reader, as an intuitive advisor, whatever, you literally are opening up the flow of resources to come into your life and then flow in greater quantities to other people. If I shut down my earning capacity, and I used to do this, by the way, I thought, and it was like privilege guilt, class privilege guilt. I thought, oh, you know, I've like, I've had it. I have enough. I should just cap it. But what I was doing is preventing myself from hiring more people and creating more jobs and being able to distribute the excess to organizations and in, increase the economy in my local area and you know all over the world like we need more money in the hands of conscious women we do because we are going to be the ones who will change the world and we need it now so you making more money is going to help way more people than you undercharging and struggling and in fact you undercharging and struggling only negatively impacts the people in your immediate vicinity and beyond. Because when you block the flow for you, you are literally blocking the flow for them as well. And you are harming them. Amen. I love that. <laughs> yes. On so many levels, yes. And I think, you know, you're absolutely right. Like to be able to be, for us to be the custodians of wealth and to be able to bring that out into the world and distribute wealth in a really powerful way. What, what a wonderful way of creating that uh, revolutionary change in the world um, and being able to receive, you know, actually, even as you were sharing, I was really tapping into that Empress energy as well. And that idea of abundance, because the Empress is so much about that infinite abundance. And yeah. just because you're receiving uh, a higher amount from your readings doesn't necessarily mean that now someone else is losing out. That no, in fact, is. like, let's just do a logical explanation here. Let's say you live in an area where it's not common for people to visit tarot readers and you start charging more and doing really well. Well, that only, like, because you become more visible, now people have tarot on their mind. And if they see your marketing, it's good for everyone because a rising tide lifts all ships in the harbor. If you're in an area where then tarot is becoming more visible and more celebrated and people are getting great results, that's going to help all the tarot readers in the area rise because mm. we are all, we are not separate. Yes, yes. And for me, that really feels into um, creating tarot as a very legitimate tool for personal growth and transformation. And I think that when we undercharge, we're doing a disservice, not yeah, only to our tarot. Tarot. Yeah, not only to customers, but to tarot overall, because this it just perpetuates this old idea of tarot is just you know a, a party trick or i'll just get a reading and then i'll just you know completely forget about it because that was just a bit of fun um oh, i yeah. my whole mission is about changing that whole mindset across, across the world so yeah that speaks really loud and clear to me mm, very powerful and i can see like this is it's so beautiful to see you like talking about this too because i can see like this is you in your element and what you really um, are here to share. And, you know, the other thing that really dropped in for me actually was around the nervous system um, and just being aware of those signs 
uh, because sometimes we might misread that. So even, you know, the being the, the judgy about, well, if you kind of catch yourself going like, oh, why is she charging this much? Or you're like, okay, well, maybe that's my nervous system. And how can yeah. I create safety? Yes. How can I create safety in this moment? Because yeah. safety is required for expansion, but the safety has to come first. And can you talk a little bit into, well, what does safety look like? How do you, how do you create safety? Yeah. So our nervous system is a whole network of neurons that includes our brain that runs through our entire body. And those neurons communicate. It's like a communication network, like the mycelial network underground with the mushrooms. Same thing. Um, and so it speaks in the language of energy, really. It's, it's electrical firing between neurons. And so th that, those electrical signals have a frequency and that frequency is literally sending communication all over the body. So when we are dysregulated, the frequency is threat, threat, threat. And it shuts off the flow of cerebro cerebrospinal fluid from our brain to, I'm sorry, from our body to our brain and our brain to our body. It, it uh, has way more blood, way less blood flow and oxygenation going to your brain. It will limit your um, peripheral vision. It increases respiration. It shuts down digestion. There's all these physiological things that happen when your body is sending the electrical current frequency of threat, threat, threat. And so what we want to do is we want to uh, bring ourselves into coherence. And coherence is a frequency of safety. And safe, you can access that. There are so many tools to do it. You just have to remember to do it instead of thinking that you are going to solve it with your brain. You are not going to solve it with your brain. You have to solve it with your body. You cannot tell your body it's safe. You have to allow your body to feel that it is safe. Safety is a feeling, not a thought. Mm -hmm. And so one of my favorite ways to do it is to simply notice gravity. So you can do this anytime. You can do it when you're driving. You can do it when you're watching a movie. You can do it right now as you're listening to this podcast. I'm noticing the feeling of my feet on the ground. And I'm noticing the feeling of gravity on my body and how gravity is present in this moment, holding my body to the surface of the planet and how I don't need to do anything about that. And it's just here safely holding me and it will be forever. How cool is that? So that's one tool is just to notice gravity. Now there's like a lot of more complicated layered drills and all these ways to know what kind of regulating tool do you need, but we can all have a small handful of tools that we can turn to, to signal safety in our bodies. And then what happens is the more we signal safety in our bodies, the more we crave that feeling of safety. So the more we just incorporate regulating tools all throughout our day. Um, rhythmic movement is a regulating tool. Taking a walk, having a warm cup of tea, alternate bilateral movement is one. Um, the emotional freedom technique. All of these things are a wonderful way to regulate your nervous system and feel safe. Now, mm. and then you just have to remember in practice. Mm. And so would you recommend just even, even if you're not necessarily feeling out of yourself or your nervous systems, you know, in hyper mode, would you recommend still just practicing these things regularly throughout the day to maintain that equilibrium? To maintain and also to access pleasure because mm. we cannot access pleasure unless we feel safe. And so if we can signal safety when we already feel safe, then pleasure becomes available. Then we can really tap into our five senses and begin to savor our lives and savor what it is to be in a body. And that's where it gets really fun. Mm, yeah. So can you speak a little bit more into that? Because even just I had a little glimpse of, oh, you know, if I was stepping into a place of pleasure, it almost feels like that abundant flow yes. opens up. That's the right. Yeah. yeah, and it does. So my theory 
is that our nervous system works as a tuning fork. And the tuning fork is its frequency. That electricity has a frequency, right? And um, that tuning fork, that frequency is our ability to manifest and is our ability to increase the flow. You know, one thing that we know is that when our bodies feel safe, it increases the, fl the blood flow and the oxygen flow all throughout our blood vessels. So I like to think about that as a metaphor for the flow of resources, the flow of blessings, um, certainly the flow of money, but the flow of really opportunity and all kinds of abundance in our lives. And that when we can first signal safety and then access pleasure and the yum feeling after we first feel safe and after we've you know, built that safety capacity, then we're really opening up like, whoa, how good can it get? And then it just keeps getting better and better and better. But as it does, we also have to realize, like I said, when presented with stresses, even when they are positive stresses, our nervous system will get triggered by that which is unfamiliar. And so we have to constantly be in this dance of, whoop, I'm up against the edge of my capacity to receive. Now, whoop, this feels like too much. And, you know, you can think about it in, in terms of lovemaking. Like, I think we've probably all been in that place where it almost feels like too much and we check out or like start to think about the grocery list. And if we can just stay with that edge and signal safety, and it's okay to slow things down too, right? And that's called titration. So titration is a tool where we do small, doable amounts, which over time expand our capacity to receive while feeling safe. So if you think about it, like, let's say you're, you're making love and it gets really intense and like the pleasure almost feels like too much, you can slow it down and titrate and say like, let me, let's just pause. And then you could do a safety signaling practice. You could feel gravity, you could slow it down and then see, okay, like, could I do a quarter of a percentage more now? Do I have more space now? Do I have more capacity now? So we get to play with our edges in this way, but not in the way of like, what's wrong with me? I have a block or uh, everything I want is outside my comfort zone. You just have to push past it. Like, that's not the game. The game is, oh, I feel an edge. Can I normalize this? Can I stop, acknowledge, signal safety? Do I want to go further now? No, I don't. Great, honor that, right? So we get to play with it around our receiving in all areas of our life financially, love-wise, physically, everything. Mm, that's so powerful. Yes, because I think, you know, as you're stepping into that place of pleasure, and it is naturally an expansive energy. And it, there is a point at which you'll probably reach that uh, comfort, discomfort zone, yeah. um, because that is the nature of expansion, is that we will always hit our growth edge. Um, and I think it's really interesting to of, of just taking note about whether you're going into the, what's blocking me? What's the problem? Oh, now I've got to dig into that whole problem um, because that kind of takes you back to the nervous system and needing just to keep that safe again and so on. But then going back into the place of expansion. Um, and I think, yeah, it's really neat having just like, you don't have to blow out the boundaries <laughs> all in one go. Uh, and uh, no, I would recommend you don't because <laughs> what that does, and like, I think that, you know, more old school personal development sort of got this wrong where it was about like, you know, powering into a state change and pushing past boundaries in a way that actually can be really re-traumatizing and, and make those nervous system patterns double down on locking down. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, fantastic. And so mm, is this part of your new book that's coming out? Yes, yes, it is. Mm, All of this wait. is in there. I love it. I love it. Do you have a title yet, actually, for that book? I, I don't really. It's still like I'm still very much in early development. Yeah, and no, any published date or anything like that? You're still in creation? No, nothing like I haven't. I haven't. I'm working on the proposal now. So I'm doing the sample oh, yeah. chapters. Haven't sold the book yet, but my plan is to sell it by summer. 
Yeah, fantastic. Maybe by the time this, po- actually, I think by the time this is live, I'm just going to say, yes, this book has sold okay. now. And I got the book uh, advance that I desire with my dream publisher. So the end. Fantastic. Yes. And a week probably coming in 2025. <laughs> yes. Yes. With the most amazing title that we can't even say it because it's so amazing right at this point. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'm really curious, apart from the book, what else is coming up for you over sort of the next six to 12 months? Yeah, so we do, um, I teach these two live workshops every year and one of the most fun parts of them, and actually I think our conversation may have just landed what the next one is going to be themed. Um, Probably. We'll see. Uh, But I teach these workshops. The one I taught most recently is called Wide Receiver. Um, Even though that is a position in American football, it is not about football. um, That probably won't be relevant to your listeners, but if you have any American listeners. Oh, um, the majority of our listeners are American, yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. Um, So I teach these free three-day workshops where we really get to dive into this stuff together and have a deeply transformative experience. It's the only time people can come and learn from me for free. I have only one setting and that setting is on. So whether I'm teaching in my paid program or at a live event or in a free workshop, it's the same thing. And so I love doing that. So our next one will be in October um, and just keep an eye out for that. But if you want to make sure that you're connected with me, um, the best place to do that is you can go over to Instagram to my account at Kate Northrup, and then you can send me a DM that just only says the word wisdom. So no other words, just wisdom. And then my little bot assistant will send you um, a money breakthrough guide that comes with this 25 minute training where I really walk you through how to signal safety within your nervous system. And you'll get that guide, which is 20 of my high earning women friends, high six, seven and eight figure women sharing their biggest money breakthroughs of all time. And then the training also includes mine. So you can really speed your own path to prosperity. Mm. And actually, I think I may have already checked that out and it is amazing. So make sure you grab that. Um, and the three day workshop sounds really, really powerful. What, what are you, what are you thinking for this one? Well, it might have something to do with the archetype that we talked about today. How fun. See, yeah, well, if you're okay. into tarot. But I really go for it. Like I have a whole, like I do this whole creative vision and like make the photo shoot around it for the branding uh, ritual in and of itself. And it's really this like beautiful energetic ceremony of stepping into the energy of that next workshop. And so I'm getting some cool visuals as we were talking and I'm like, yeah, I think go on there. Yes. Yes. You know what? I'm really also loving just the integration of things like ritual and ceremony into these more like, I don't know, like kind of these worldly topics. So, you know, when we are talking about money, but we're doing it from a place of real sacred space um, and holding that space for each other. I think so magical. We're, we're also starting to integrate a lot more of that ritual and ceremony too into the way that um, we hold our workshops and spaces and it feels so good like as the leader and but also for our community I can see it's just activating <clears throat> yes, something really it is. and I think it puts us all in resonance like being in ceremonial space being in ritual I think it aligns all of our frequencies together um kind of like automatically and that's why people say like okay now we're going to drop in I think what we're actually experiencing is like our bodies dropping to a specific frequency or dropping in together, like in sync together. Mm, Which is everything that you've just been talking about, because I think sometimes when you go into just a (coughs) standard um, webinar, you know, you're thinking, (laughs) oh, that sounds true. Oh, that's a fact, you know, Uh, but dropping in, we're dropping into the body, we're dropping into our feelings. And that's actually something that can be a lot more transformational. So it's beautiful to see you doing that. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Kate, where can people find out more about you? I know you've just shared your Instagram. Yes, so. shared that, but that's a great place. Um, my podcast, Plenty, you know, you're obviously a podcast listener if you're listening to this. So 
I think you would love that. Um, we dive into all things plenty around healing your relationship with time, money, and work and accessing the field of plenty that's available at all times. And then my website is katenorthrup.com. I send a weekly um, dispatch, which is my top tips, strategies, and stories to help you have a better relationship with money. Yeah, fantastic. Well, definitely check that out. Um, I just think, Kate, you've shared some amazing nuggets today that I think will be truly transformational and start to at least get things in motion with seeing things from a different perspective. So I really do appreciate all of your wisdom and your insight today. Thank you so very much for your time and your energy today. Thanks, Bridget. This was fun. Hey, if you love this video, then make sure you check out this next video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.